Good morning, it's May 13th. Welcome to the Mayor's Health Roundtable and we'll start off with opening comments from Mayor Peary. Good afternoon, as Dave has already said, it's May 13th. Um, if, if you're a bit like me, I was working on the fully wrong agenda today as these days merge. Um, it's, it's, uh, numbers are, are of course trending in the, in the right direction. We've got Chantel on the line and I'll hand it directly over to her today to the health unit. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor Perry, and hello to everybody. Um, the health unit today is reporting that the current number of confirmed cases remains at 65. 11 of which are active. So that means that we have 49 cases that are resolved and the five deaths that are, are linked. We currently have, um, at, no, there has currently been 3,835 COVID tests completed uh, by primary care providers, nurse uh, doctors, as well as our EMS or paramedics throughout our region. Uh, 251 are currently under investigation. Date, testing in nine of the 10 long-term care homes in our area have been completed for a total of 1,551 tests. Uh, and the testing has been completed in all six of our emergency child care centers. So a total of 50 staff have been tested. Again, thank you to Primary Care and our EMS for completing all these tests in our area. It is contributing to the early identification of COVID and helping us fight the, fight the fight COVID-19 and, and reduce that transmission. As you may be aware, the Ontario government has extended the declara declaration of emergency under the Emergency Management and Social Protection Act, and this will be in effect until June 2nd. There is on the website more information. On As mentioned previously, the more COVID testing helps make sure that we can start returning to normal more safely. All, the mem all members of the community with symptoms, even if they have mild or resemble the cold, common cold, are encouraged to call their health care provider or the health unit for a referral to the assessment centers. We do have assessment centers open throughout our region in most of our communities. For a list of um, dated symptoms, please visit our website or the Ontario.ca website for um, a list of those. We are. We are heading in the right direction. The public health measures that everyone has been practicing is making a difference. However, we, it is so important that we continue to work together to keep reducing the, the spread of COVID-19. As the Government of Ontario continues to open uh, more workplaces, more businesses, and more outdoor recreational uh, spaces, we need to remember that we need to stay home as much as possible and only go out for essential items, groceries, medication, etc. We are asking that individuals, community members, please limit their trips to the stores and send only one member per family to run errands when possible or per household. Wash their hands frequently and maintain the physical distancing of two meters when in stores. The hand washing and the physical distancing are very important measures to preventing uh, the spread of COVID-19. If you are not well, that's the other important public health measure. If you are not well, please do not leave your home. Stay at home until uh, your symptoms has resolved. If you do have symptoms, though, so please call your primary care provider or the health unit. Our COVID information line is open today from 9 to 5 uh, p.m. We have a toll-free number, the 1-800-461-1818, or people can call the local number in their, in their community. Stay well. Stay home and stay positive. Thank you, Chantel. Next, we'll go to Blaise McNeil with the Timmins and District Hospital. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and all the folks on the call. As we've seen announced across the province, the current restrictions are working to slow the rate of transmission of COVID-19. As we continue making progress against the spread of COVID-19, we're asking you to keep doing your part to make this pandemic as short as possible. We have seen the community at large invest a considerable amount into doing the right thing and following the public health measures that have been put in place. I've spoken about the intensity of effort of hospital staff, but the intensity also extends to everyone in our community. Public health measures are not easy, but they have ensured that the hospital was, has remained at a stable capacity throughout this pandemic. 
As we see beautiful weather in our forecast leading into the long weekend, it is vitally important that we stay the course. A large reason our hospital has not been overwhelmed by a surge of COVID patients is because our community has taken the public health measures seriously. We are appreciative of every community member who has continued to stay the course. You are the reason our critical care capacity remains available for the critically ill. We cannot return to business as usual quickly without undoing all the progress we've made. The health of our community, healthcare sector, frontline workers depends on us all staying the course together. We are beginning to think about how hospital operations will change as we learn to live in a COVID world. I suspect our new normal will be quite different. We are asking our community to please stay safe, stay home unless it's for essential travel, and wash your hands often. Thank you. All right, thank you for that. Are there any questions from the media for the uh, Timmins and District Hospital or the Fort Plain Health Unit? Hearing none, we'll go to Brian Marks with the Cochrane DSAP. Are, are you on the line with us this morning, Brian? Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks, Dave. Uh, so the numbers for EMS, uh, again, another busy day, 26 calls with uh, 16 in Timmins. On the food security side, um, we had 71 meals distributed by uh, the volunteers at the First Baptist Church, uh, 41 at the McIntyre throughout the day, and uh, 40 at Living Space. And uh, our homeless numbers are uh, basically the same with 28 at the college and 23 at the MAC and uh, nine at, uh, sorry, eight at Living Space. Uh, and I just want to uh, extend a thanks again to uh, all of the staff at Living Space and all of the volunteers in the food security uh, um, uh, delivery system. Uh, and also, uh, just want to um, convey that we will be capitalizing on the relationships that we've developed and strengthened through our COVID-19 uh, service network, uh, both with uh, Northern College, um, Canadian Mental Health Association and multiple other service pr providers uh, to be able to um, uh, serve uh, the most vulnerable portions of our population uh, in whatever the new normal might look like and, and be able to uh, move forward. Um, thanks very much. All right, thank you, Brian. Uh, from the City of Timmins uh, perspective, uh, notice has gone out or will be going out today that the Great Canadian Kayak uh, Challenge and Festival uh, will not be going ahead this year. Uh, we'll start planning for next year a little earlier. Uh, also, as has already been reported, the Canada Day celebrations will look a little different this year, and, and we're working on building a online or virtual format that um, uh, you can uh, keep an eye on the uh, Tourism Timmins uh, Facebook page or the City of Timmins and Tourism Timmins website for further information uh, there. Um, right now, I'll go back to the media for any questions. Dave, it's Bob at Moose FM. Can you tell me what kind of uh, reasoning went, be, went into canceling the kayak festival? It's pretty late in the summer that it's held, around the end of August, right? That's right, Bob. Uh, our, our reasoning related to the kayak festival was was quite similar to uh, the decision-making uh, for Rock on the River, to be honest with you. The Kayak Festival is a community festival. It only happens because we have participation from, uh, from the community, and in particular from the business community, who's been a great supporter of, of the festival. Um, knowing what the business community is going through, uh, the, it, it, just, it, it just wasn't practical uh, to, uh, to try to move it forward. And, and hope uh, that, that the business community could contribute the way that they had in the past. Uh, further to that, we're not exactly sure how this is going to look over the, over the next few months, so uh, we just made the decision to, um, the, the, the committee got together uh, with input from the city and, and made the decision that, uh, that we should just move it to next year um, and start planning for a, a bigger, more comprehensive event. Would it be fair to say that it's mostly a business decision being three and a half months out? You know, in that time, large gatherings might be allowed. So is it more of a business decision, financial? Well, would, uh, to be honest, I would say no. We're erring on the, uh, you know, we're using an abundance of caution here in our decision making. Um, you, you know, from a business point of view, practically speaking, it doesn't make sense. But on the other 
on the other side of it. Uh, you know, planning for an event that might might very well not go forward is just not solid thinking right now. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, we'll hand it over to Mayor Perry for closing remarks. <clears throat> Thanks once again, as always, for being on this call. I can't thank enough everybody in the community, from the volunteers to the full-time people, to the cashiers, to cleaning, everybody that's been involved in doing their part to uh, allow us to get through this COVID-19 safely and, and, and healthily. healthily. Um, one group that I haven't said thank you is our bylaw officers. They've been out there for the last eight weeks, really in an educational capacity, um, demonstrating much patience and, and working, working very well, very well with all of our vendors in our business community. So hats off to all of them out there. There has been a few days where they they have have a, a wee bit of abuse, but they they have uh, worked uh, very hard and cracking that situation. And, and in all those situations, the individuals have come back and apologize. So hats off to a group that's out there on the front line, doing first and foremost what's required to keep our our city safe. Um, with the conversations this morning with the chief of police, again another zero uh, event night. Again, the city and the, and the citizens are doing everything that they can to respect all the rules, regulations, guidelines uh, to make our city safe and healthy. Hats off. Uh, we've got 99% a, a of our population is responsible and respectful, and I, I want to acknowledge that every single day. Um, as we work through our COVID-19, obviously, life goes on. Uh, the reason that Dave asked if Brian was on the line. Well, there's an active fire in the, in the units on Sterling Avenue, two of which would be DSAB units, but I was there's maybe five to ten units. Uh, most of the fire department is down there right now. Our chief is not here. And EMS, and EMS personnel as well. Um, everybody did get out safe, but as I say, um, despite COVID-19, all of our EMS, all of our safety personnel, fire departments, DSAB, They've also got full-time jobs that they're performing at the same time. It's always very sad in our community when individuals uh, pass, pass away and, and, of course, the families cannot celebrate their lives as, as they would have wanted and they would have expected. We had two such losses recently in the community, one being Daryl McGregor and the other being Pete Gazzola, lifelong residents of the, of the Timmins area lifelong educators in Timmins, lifelong athletes, lifelong role models. If there were two individuals that you would have wanted your children to, you could point to that you'd want your children to be role models of, it would be those two individuals. Fantastic people and fantastic ambassadors for Timmins. My condolences, sincere, sincere condolences go out to their, their loved ones and their families and their friends, and, and, and we will miss them. Thank you very much. Uh, All right. Thank you, Mayor Peary. And once again, thanks to the media for helping us get the news out.